We're talking before about spanning sets. This video will talk about linear independence. So I put a set of vectors up here, vector 1, vector 2, vector 3, and so forth, all contained in some set. Remember that from this set of vectors, you can always write a linear combination and set it equal to 0. So you can have c sub 1 v1 plus c sub 2 v2 plus c sub 3 v3 and so forth until you get to c sub n vn. And that would then equal the zero vector, right? A whole string of zeros. There always has to be a solution to this, which is that every possible coefficient is equal to zero. So we call that the trivial solution. Any solution that you get beyond that is a non-trivial solution. So if you have the trivial solution, and that's the only solution, then we say that that set of vectors is linearly independent. So if the trivial solution is the only solution, then that set of vectors is linearly independent. And what that means is I can't write any vector as a linear combination of any of the other vectors is not possible. On the other hand, if there are non-trivial solutions, like c sub 1 equals 3, c sub 2 equals 5, c sub 3 equals 4, then those would be considered non-trivial solutions. It could be that one of those c sub n's is 0, but they can't all be 0. So a non-trivial solution means that the set is linearly dependent. Put another way, if at least of one of the vectors in that set is a linear combination of another, then they're linearly dependent. So for example, if vector 3 is 2 times vector 1 plus vector 2, then those vectors are linearly dependent. Vector 3 depends on vector 1 and vector 2. If you go back to my example with the i's, j's, and k's, those are linearly independent. You can't write any of those three vectors as a linear combination of the other. How do we figure out whether vectors are, linear com are linearly independent or linearly dependent? Let's take a look at this example, and we'll carry it through a little bit. Let's look at this set of vectors. This set 2, negative 1, 0, 3. So I'm operating in R4. 1, 2, 3. 5, negative 1, and the third vector will be 7, negative 1, 5, 8. How do I set this up? Well, I want to find out. I'm going to call this v1, and I'll call this v2, and I'll call this v3. So I want to see if c1 v1 plus c2 v2 plus c3 v3 is equal to 0, and does that have a non-trivial solution? So if all I get is a bunch of zeros out of it, then it's dependent. If I don't, then it's independent. So let's see what I get. Drop these columns, drop the vectors down the column of a matrix, so 2, negative 1, 0, 3. I've got 1, 2, 5, negative 1, 7, negative 1, 5, 8. And remember, I have the 0 vector on the other side, so it's just a column of zeros. Before I started this video, I threw this matrix onto my graphing calculator, and I did a row reduction rather than you sit there and watch me reduce this, because we've done a lot of row reductions already. I've I'm just going to tell you what I got out of it. So I got a 1, 0, 3, 0. I got a 0, 1, 1, 0. And then I got two complete rows of zeros. That means we're going to need to set up a parameter. So let's let x sub 3 be t. Right? If x sub 3 is t, then, well, in this case, they're not really the x's. They're the c sub n's. So let's let 
C sub 3 BT. Try to be consistent. All right, then from the second row, C sub 2 plus T is equal to 0, so C sub 2 must be the opposite of T. And then the first row tells me that C sub 1 plus 3 times T is equal to 0, so C sub 1 is negative 3T. So what does that mean? That means that if I wanted to find C sub 1, C sub 2, C sub 3, then really, let's pull the T on the outside. I've got negative 3, negative 1, 1. Which means there are a lot of different ways that I can write these as linear combinations. That means that this is dependent. I came up with non-trivial solutions. Now, you won't always get a set of values that has a parameter in it. Sometimes you'll simply get 1, 2, 3, and that's okay. That still means they're linearly, de in, uh, linearly dependent. So what have I come up with? I've come up with negative 3 times the first vector minus 1 times the second vector plus 1 times the third vector is equal to 0. Or you can hit everything through with a negative 1, right? You could write it as 3v1 plus v2 minus v3 is equal to 0. So they are linearly dependent. Do you see why they're linearly dependent? Move this up a little bit, and I'll show you. What if I added v3 to both sides? If I added v3 to both sides, I would get v3 equals 3v1 plus v2. So in other words, vector 3 depends on vectors 1 and 2. And you could do this with the other ones also, right? You could move v2 to the other side and show v2 is, a, is dependent on 1 and 3. You can show 1 is dependent on 2 and 3. So those vectors are dependent on each other, so it's linearly dependent, and you can write them as linear combinations of each other. All right, let's take a look at another case. I had mentioned before the three basis vectors, i, j, and k. Let's take a look at them. 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, and 0, 0, 1. Are they linearly dependent or linearly independent? Well, if I drop these down the column of a matrix, second column, 0, 1, 0, third column, 0, 0, 1, and then the last column we said were all zeros because we were doing that C1, V1, plus C2, V2, plus C3, V3, equals a zero vector, you realize that my question is already solved. C sub 1 is 0, C sub 2 is 0, C sub 3 is 0. Okay, trivial solution. Linearly independent. And in fact, it turns out it spans R3. I can write any vector in R3 as a linear combination of those three vectors. Let's take a look at another set. This time we'll take a look at a set of polynomials. So my set S is polynomial number one, polynomial number two, polynomial number three, where polynomial number one is one minus X, polynomial number two is five plus three X minus two X squared, and polynomial three is 1 plus 3x minus x squared. All right, what do I want to do? I want to find out if these things are linearly independent. I want to do C1P1 plus C2P2 plus C3P3 and see if that equals 0. Are the C sub n's all equal to 0, or do I get a non-trivial solution? All right, so this will take a couple of steps. C sub 1 times 1 minus x plus C sub 2 times 5 plus 3x minus 2x squared. Oops. And then C sub 3 times 1 plus 3x minus x squared. 
expand this whole thing out. I get c sub 1 minus c sub 1x plus 5c sub 2 plus 3c sub 2x minus 2c sub 2x squared plus c sub 3 plus 3c sub 3x minus c sub 3x squared equals 0. Now, I should regroup these. How do I regroup them? Well, don't regroup them by factoring out the c sub n's, because then you'll be right back to the line above it where you started. So instead, factor them with constants, x's, and x squares. So the constants, I've got a c sub 1 here. I've got a minus c sub 1x over there. I've got a 5c sub 2. I've got a plus 3c sub 2x minus 2c sub 2x squared plus c sub 3 plus 3c sub 3x and then minus c sub 3x squared. From here, I can form myself a matrix. where the first column down will actually be the c sub 1s, the second column will be the c sub 2s, the third one will be the c sub 3s. The c sub 1s are 1, negative 1, and 0. You realize here's 1 c sub 1, here's negative 1 c sub 1, and there's no c sub 1s over there. How about the c sub 2s? There's 5 of them, there's 3 of them, and there's negative 2 of them. For the c sub 3s, there's 1 of them, there's three of them, and there's negative one of them. What happened is within my parentheses, I'm actually doing constants, or I can, I can even call them x to the zeros. Here's x to the first, here's x to the second. So I could have just written all the x sub zero ones going left to right across the rows. In other words, not dropping down the columns, go across the rows. And then what goes on the other side? A column of zeros. If you want to find out whether or not you have the trivial solution, put in a column of zeros. I also row reduce this between the time that I stopped the first video and started the second one. I ended up with 1, 0, negative 3 half 0. I got 0, 1, 1 half 0, and 0, 0, 0, 0. All right, so it looks like we're going to need a parameter for this one. Let's do something shocking, shocking and choose x sub 3 to be t. If x sub 3 is t, then x sub 2 plus 1 half t is equal to 0. x sub 2 is negative 1 half t. And then the top line, x sub 1 minus 3 halves t is equal to 0. So x sub 1 is 3 halves t. So I can come down here, and I can say that x1, x2, x3, is equal to t times, what are my values? 3 halves, negative 1 half, 1. Although, maybe I don't want to deal with those fractions in there. Can I write this as 3, negative 1, 2? Right? If I'm saying that any multiple of that column matrix works, then why not hit the whole thing through with a 2, and now you come up with nice values. What do I get from this? I get that 3p1 minus p2 plus 2p3 is equal to 0, they are dependent. I can actually write those polynomials as um, linear combinations of each other. If you only have two vectors in the set, and they're not scalar multiples of each other, then they're linearly independent. So if you have a set with two vectors, and suppose the vectors are 2, 1, negative 3, and negative 4, negative 2, 6, huh, these things are scalar multiples. Scalar multiples, not linearly independent. So I can take 2 times negative 2, 1 times negative 2, negative 3 times negative 2, and I get that. 
if they're if they're not scalar multiples and there's only two vectors right this works for a set of two vectors then they are linearly independent right so if you have a set of only two vectors you can test linear independence without writing out all types of equations all right let's take a look at one more sort of different looking example suppose i've got this set of three functions so I've got function one, I've got function two, I've got function three. Function one, I'm going to define as sine squared x. Function two, cosine squared x, and function three will be the constant five. So I want to check c sub one f one plus c sub two f two plus c sub three f three equals zero and c whether I get trivial or non-trivial solutions to this set. So I end up with c sub 1 times sine squared x plus c sub 2 times cosine squared x plus c sub 3 times f of 3. Well, whatever c sub 3 is, it's not going to affect f of 3. f of 3 is just 5. So we'll write it out like that. It happens to be true that I know sine squared plus cosine squared is equal to 1. So what if I wrote this c sub 2 and c sub 1 as the same variable? So let's leave this as c sub 1 sine squared x. I'll call this c sub 1 cosine squared x plus 5 is equal to 0. Okay. Now, factor out a c sub 1. If I factor out a c sub 1, I get sine squared x plus cosine squared x plus 5 is equal to 0. Well, that's 1. c sub 1 plus 5 equals 0 implies that c sub 1 is negative 5. And sure enough, negative 5 sine squared x minus 5 cosine squared x plus 5 is equal to 0. They are linearly dependent. And that's the end of this section.